Hi guys, so today I'm going to do a lung dissection for you and I have ordered from my butcher in a Mexican market uh, some lungs of a pig, okay? Lungs of a pig, they're going to be roughly the same size as a human which is why we use them and obviously we eat pigs in, in the market so we can get hold of their, their rubber bits too, okay? So I'm just going to hold this up at the at the top of the trachea here, which is the tube that carries air from the nose and the mouth down to the lungs. And you'll notice that the trachea is made up of small rings of cartilage there. Those rings, they're not complete. They're, they go around to about there, and I'll show you that in a second. Um, and the reason for that, guys, is that, so if you do get anything stuck in your trachea, they can open up a bit more or close a bit more. Those of you that are asthmatic, sometimes these rings might collapse a bit and then you need to have an inhaler just to loosen them up a bit more, okay? So here we have, guys, the voice box here. I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but you see the bit where, where you have that pinch there. You have a pinch, okay? It's for my audience there. That pinch, is going to um, allow to, to vibrate air as, the, as it comes back out your trachea in order to produce vibrations. And that, along with your tongue and your mouth, will enable you to, to speak and talk and communicate. Okay. So here we have the voice box and the larynx. And what we have, guys, as well, is two tubes. We have the trachea, as just said, and we have the esophagus. Here. So you may want to know how does your body control which way the food goes? How does the food not go straight down to the track here? Well, unfortunately it's been removed, but normally there's like a flap that covers the track here when you swallow. That flap is called the epiglottis. It's called the epiglottis. Yeah? And that will, when you swallow, will cover that so you don't swallow food, and it will guide food down the esophagus into the stomach. And I can demonstrate it for you now with a grape. So we're going to push the grape down the esophagus. And this process, guys, when you swallow, your esophagus is surrounded by muscles that just squeeze the food down. That process is called peristalsis. Yeah? And so your muscles squeeze the food down. That's why you can actually swallow if you're hanging upside down, yeah? And that is squeezed all the way down by your muscles, and I don't know where the bottom of the esophagus is here. Let's have a look, here we go, it's there. And that would go into your stomach, yeah? So that muscle squeezing the food down, all the way down, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and it should, now enter the stomach for further processing with the acids. Do you know what? I think I've actually squeezed the grape. Let's see if it comes out in one piece. Are we ready? Yeah. Is that the grape? Is it the grape? <laughs> it is. Oh. <laughs> so that was peristalsis into the stomach. I did squid it a bit. Okay. So let's hold this up, guys. We should have, this should be left side, right side. I've got it the right way around here. The left side, as we know, is where the, slightly where the heart sits. So we have a lung that has, is slightly smaller to accommodate the heart. And we can see that in the lobes. This is the right side of the lung, and it has three lobes, it's split into three. One large one on the bottom, do you see that? Yeah. One smaller one in the middle there, and then the larger piece there. They are lobes. And this one actually also looks like it's got three lobes. So I might have to check what's going on there. But just get that sort of, that to me is, that to me, you see that gap? It's where the heart is accommodated. Do you see that? Slightly accommodated there. So it's small, slightly smaller now. But you can see the lobes. Okay guys? and the bottom ones are the biggest. Yeah. Um, we're going to now cut open the trachea just so we can see 
those rings of cartilage that form forming. So I might even separate it from the esophagus now. You see how tightly they're joined? Don't get confused with swallowing food and breathing, okay? They're different tubes. Remember that it's the epiglottis that controls or helps us to not swallow food into our lungs. So I might, I might snip it off, guys, right at the top. Okay. These are meat scissors. Go to your chicken lady. She uses these to cut the chicken. There we go. So there we have the trachea. Yeah. Just try to get a bit more of that there. I am filming this live in front of the studio audience, by the way, they're being awesome, so well done guys, kudos to you. <laughs> we can see this trachea here, it's actually quite closed up at the moment, but what I can do, uh, try and do is open it and then cut between those rings of cartilage. See that? So that's come away really nicely and we can we can feel those rings as well. Yeah. As we well we haven't done the lesson yet actually guys, but you may you may or may not know that your trachea is lined with ciliated cells, that means little hairs. And those little hairs help to trap and remove particles and bring them out. Within those cells you also have goblet cells that make mucus which traps microbes. And, and helps to dispel of those. So when you're sick, you have a lot of mucus build up, you know the story. Sometimes I can find a bit of mucus at the bottom of the Oh yeah, so I don't know how well you can see that in the camera or in the audience. You see all that frothy stuff? A bit of mucus in there. Yeah? And I can put my finger in. A bit mucusy. Oh. Yeah? A bit mucusy. Yeah. So that's the track here. I'm just going to put my hands in my wash bowl and dry them. I'm now going to try for you to inflate the lungs. Yeah. So remember the trachea split into the trachea splits into them two bronchi or one bronchus, and then that further splits into smaller tubes called bronchioles which then reaches the tiny air sacs called alveoli. That's where the gas exchange happens between the lungs and the blood. So it's oxygen going into the blood and carbon dioxide being removed. Yeah, and that's what happens in the alveoli. That's why guys, we want to keep our lungs nice and moist as well, because that helps the gases to diffuse and move in and out. It also helps our lungs to stay elasticated so we can get full inflation and deflation. So here's the, um, I guess it's the fun part. We'll try and blow the lungs up or inflate them. I'll just put this over here. Now the problem is I used this yesterday and I don't know which end I blew from and which end I put in. So we'll just have to run. Honestly, when I went to the butchers, he said, he said to me, yeah, they inflate. And he took this and he went, and he blew them up. 